All right, welcome back to Lightroom Classic 2020. And today we're gonna to take a look at two different elements of Lightroom. One is how to apply the same settings to multiple photos, which is actually very helpful. And we're gonna do that both in the library and the develop module. And then I'm gonna show you how to do export or save. If you notice inside of Lightroom, there is no save. So why isn't there any save inside of Lightroom Classic? The first thing we're gonna take a look at to apply the same settings to multiple photos. So if you look at these images right here, they're all very much the same. What I'm going to do is shift click. Shift click is gonna select all images in a linear row, basically from one point to point B. So it's gonna select all this stuff in here. So I'm gonna hold shift, I'm gonna click, and it's gonna select all those images. Or you can use a command or the control click where you click on one, on this one, click on this one, and it's gonna select all the individual images. Now I've selected all five of these images. You'll notice over here in the quick develop settings, this saved preset has changed to multiple settings, meaning it's going to apply this to every image that's selected. And right over here, I have this basic panel and I can open this up so I get all my normal controls. And what happens is you're gonna be able to change your exposure either by third stops or full stops. What can happen is I have this image of this goat, baby goat, and it's gonna be quite dark. So what I wanna do is kind of open up the shadow areas by a full stop. If I come here and I click on this image, it's gonna open up the shadows for all five images at the same time. Now I'm gonna hit Command Z and go back out of that. There's another way you can do this. You can do, come in here and I will make some large adjustments so you can see this happening. I'll make these adjustments. Now this hasn't applied to these because I haven't selected them. So I'm gonna finish selecting them. And then if I come down here to sync settings, it allows me to select whatever I want. And what I'm gonna do at this point is just hit check all. And then I'm gonna hit synchronize and then it's gonna apply all those settings to those images. Either way you do it, it's doing the exact same thing. It's up to you how you do it, but both of those will apply settings to the same image. Now, one thing of note, this is only for global adjustments, meaning you can't go in here and just do a selective adjustment to it. You can't apply selective adjustments to multiple photos. You need to do those individually. I think what this was really kind of designed for was just making some small adjustments to make galleries online if you want your clients to pick. Let's say you had 100 images. You don't want to tone 100 images, but you want them to look as good as possible. So this is kind of a quick and really easy way to make some minor adjustments to images to get them up on a gallery. What we're gonna do is just Command Z till we get this guy back to normal. And that looks like he's back to normal or close to normal. There we go. So that's how you apply selective adjustments in the library module. Now we can come over here and I'll click on this first one and go to the develop module. It's basically the same way. We're gonna come in here, we're gonna make a large adjustment just so you can see it. I will come in here, I'm gonna shift click, so I'm gonna hold shift, click, it's gonna select all those images, and then I'm gonna come up here and hit sync. Once again, we're gonna get this profile, we can turn on or off, whatever we want. I just have everything turned on to make it easy. I can hit sync, and then bam, just like that, it's applied all those settings to this image. So that's how you sync images inside of Lightroom. I just made a quick little adjustment. We'll assume that this is toned perfectly and this is exactly how we want this image to look. And now we want to save this. One thing you will notice, if you come up here, there's no save, there's no save as. So when you're working on an image in Lightroom, how do you save the adjustments you make? Well, the answer quickly is you don't. It automatically does it for you. So as soon as you make an adjustment, it automatically writes in the XMP file what you did. And then next time you open it, it reads that file and you see it just like this. So there's no actual saving needed. However, you're eventually gonna wanna export, whether to make an image out for the web or to get printed or to do something with it. In this case, we're gonna use an export function. And actually, 
Lightroom's export function is unbelievable. It's actually the only item inside of Lightroom that I really, really like a lot. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna apply these settings here to all those images. And we're gonna assume that I wanna export all these out. We're gonna come up here and go to file and then down to export. We also have export with previous, export with a specific preset, which you will be able to see. But we're just gonna go into export. And you'll notice right here, we've got, I've got a whole bunch of export settings saved. So one of the ones I use a lot is to save for my web gallery. Let's say I want those at 1500 pixels and they're sharpened. You can save a preset that you use a lot and that way you don't have to come in here and set up a whole bunch of stuff. Up here, the first thing that we have is how do we wanna save these? Now, most of the time I'm just doing it straight for my hard drive. You could do it for email, but I don't know who saves for email. Nobody uses a CD or DVD anymore or it looks like some other programs. So basically, basically, where do you wanna export this to? In this case, I wanna export it to a hard drive. Now, when we're exporting these files, where do we want them to go to? So we have all these different selections that we can make. In this case, I'm gonna do into the same folder, but I'm gonna change that folder to, we're gonna make this one for web because we're gonna size these out for the web. So I'm gonna put web, well, maybe I'll put ready, so web ready. That way I know these are my web files. Do I want to rename these files? Right now, this is called goats1, 1853, and then the next one's probably 54 and stuff. If you do want to rename them, it's really easy. All you need to do is select this, come in here, and change the settings. In this case, I am not going to rename my files. The next option we have is for video. This is not a video, so we're gonna skip that. Down here we have our file settings. So what type of file do we wanna save it for? So we have the options of JPEG, shop file, TIFF, PNG, DNG, or original. In this case, we are going to use JPEG. If you don't know what these different selections are, I'll quickly go over them, but it would be better off. It would be a good idea for you to watch another video that kind of explains what the different file types are. JPEG is great for web. This is a compression setting, so it's gonna reduce the file of your image. Photoshop is traditionally what you would work in when you're working inside of Photoshop. It supports layers. They are not compressed, so you're gonna have all your image data. TIFF is almost exactly the same, except for it's a TIFF file instead of a PSD. PNG, that's big benefit is it supports translucency for the web. So if you have a logo, but you don't want the background, PNG is a great option. DNG is a, the digital negative. That is a raw file type. That would be a conversion and then just original. And in this case, you can't rewrite a raw file. So it wouldn't let you do it. It would need to save it as something different. But in this case, we're going to save this as a JPEG. We have the option to come in here and change the quality. I think by default, it's down by 60 or something. I usually save mine up around 100 for good quality, but you can reduce it. The lower the quality, the smaller the file size. You can come in here and limit your file size to a specific number if you want, and you can change your color space here. In this case, since we're gonna save this for the web, we wanna take this away and not save it as Adobe RGB and go into sRGB because that is the color space for the web. Now, this is my favorite setting inside of Lightroom. It's the image resizing. And what it allows you to do is to resize to fit to long edge or short edge. However, you can do width and height, dimensions, megapixels, percentage. I prefer long edge. What this means is if your image is horizontal, in this case, distance here is gonna be 1500 pixels. But if this was vertical, it would make your vertical height 1500 pixels. Whatever the long edge is, it's gonna make it this dimension. Now, when you save for the web, it's always in pixels. If you've ever heard you should save for the web at 72 dots per inch of resolution, that is not true. All images for the web need to be pixel based. That's very specific. In this case, I'm gonna do 1500 pixels, but if you did want to change to inches or centimeters, you could do that right there. And that's how you set up image sizing. The next thing that we have here is output sharpening. So I can click output sharpening on 
for the screen because we're doing the web, but you also have the options for matte paper and glossy paper. Amount, low, standard, high. Now you can go into Lightroom and automatically sharpen your images yourself. However, this is the trick. When you sharpen an image, it should always be after it's sized. This output sharpening is actually beneficial before you're sharpening your image full size. And then as you reduce it down, you're gonna lose a lot of that sharpening. So in this case, I prefer to use sharpening here rather than inside of Lightroom. So we're just gonna do screen low. Watermarking, so the watermarking is gonna give you the little symbol here. And I'm gonna turn the watermark on and you can see I already have one set up. So I'm just gonna come in here and go down to edit watermarks. And this is gonna let you see how watermarks are, can be applied. So you have the option of watermark style. Do you want just basic text where you put some text in? You can see it right here. You can change the font, the size, the color, anything that you want. You could change your opacity. So that's how strong it is. So do we want to see 100% of this text? It's going to make it really white or by setting it 80 or lower, we're going to start to blend it into the background so it's not so apparent. You can put this wherever you want in the image. If you scroll down here, we have the opacity, the size, so we can fit it. We can make its inset horizontally or vertically. We can change its location. So if I want it right in the center and then I want to make it bigger, I can make it anything that you would want to do. The next option is a graphic. So in this case, you can see I have my logo in here. This was a PNG logo. Why? Well, because it supports transparency. And just like before, I can change all these settings in here as to the location that I want to save that. In this case, I can make it smaller if I'd like. And then once I get my logo exactly where I want, you're going to go ahead and you can hit save. I have a few different logos that I use quite often and I have these all saved. So it makes it really easy for me to transition from one to another. This is something you can't do really easily inside of Photoshop. This is a great tool. So I'm just going to hit cancel because I don't want to change what I did. And then post processing, what do you want to do? Do you want to export this to Photoshop after you've saved it? Do you want to open it in another application? Do you want to show it in the finder? In this case, I'm going to hit do nothing. Now, the last thing I have here is something called JPEG Mini, and I'm not going to click on this, but this is a plug-in program, and this helps reduce the size of an image without reducing the quality of the image. This is a great option for someone that has to put up galleries online all the time. It's giving you a good image, but a smaller file size. This is something I use. We're not going to click on this, but if I was to click on this, it would give me that option to use it. And the last thing that you're going to need to know, if you want to add your own preset, it is really easy. All you got to do is come in here and click add. It will allow you to choose what folder you want. You can name that preset and then go ahead and hit create. I'm not going to do that because obviously I've already created them. Then once you have presets created, in this case, I don't need to go through the whole process. I could just come up here and go file, export with preset, use the web 1500 sharpen, and it will automatically run through the process without bringing up that export window. Now that I have this all set up exactly how I want, all I have to do is hit export, and this is gonna export all of those five files and save those to the settings that I had, and that is all you have to do once this has gone through the process. All five of my files have now been exported, and I'm done and can move on to the next task. That is how you apply settings to multiple photos and how to save or export inside of Lightroom Classic. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>